Hello, I'm Atsubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, as we are approaching the end of the month, you should be expectant in your heart. You see, let me tell you this truth. Because you believe in Jesus Christ, there are certain benefits that you must enjoy. If you don't enjoy it, not because God restricted you from enjoying it, but just because you were not informed or willing to enjoy them. I'm sharing this with you because I want us to release our faith even as we make demand for our daily bread. Whatever level you have enjoyed so far, there is more. There is more. There is more. See, whatever level you are in right now, there is more. And God wants to increase your capacity. That's what I hear the Spirit of God say. He wants to increase your capacity. Will you let him do it? What do I need to do? Open your heart. Say, Lord, just increase my capacity. As much as you want to. Now, if that is clear in your mind, can you join me now as we make requests for our daily bread? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread it's coming to me right now in jesus name amen praise god thank you lord jesus praise god you know we are reading from ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good work which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them now this this should be a prayer point for you lord i want to know those good works that you have prepared beforehand for me to walk can you begin to pray that prayer now when he says good work that was prepared beforehand he's not just talking about going around preaching and preaching he's every aspect of your life something has been written concerning it the houses you would leave, something has been written concerning. The cars you would drive, something has been written concerning. How do you know? I know. Didn't you read about Jesus, that it was spoken, that the king coming, behold your king coming, riding on, a, on an ass. In that statement of prophecy, it was spoken that Jesus, now that Jesus will come riding on an animal. Okay, now... Here is Jesus. I want you to follow this now. Here is Jesus getting ready to go into Jerusalem and wondering, by what means will I go into Jerusalem? Previously, they walk. But then there is a prophecy living the good life which God prepared beforehand. There was a prophecy that, hey, your king is going to come riding, not walking. See? So, and here is Jesus thinking, Lord, okay, um, I, I feel a leading to go to Jerusalem. So how do I go? And the Lord said to him, look, I have prepared an ass for you to use. Oh, okay. So where is it? It's in the city. And describe the place for him. Oh, yeah. And Jesus called his servants. and said, hey, guys, go into the city and you'll get to this junction and you'll see and ask that is tied, which no man has ever read reading. Now, why would somebody keep an ass there that no one has ever climbed on? Now, if you study Jewish history and the laws of Moses, you will recognize quickly that that was someone's tight. Moses had instructed the people that there is the tight that you tie at your gate. And then he said, the Levites, the widows, the orphans, they will come and collect to their food. So you see that ass that was tied that no man has ever ridden on. It's not just magic. God didn't perform any magic for Jesus. You know, you know what I mean by magic. So it's not like an angel went to tie it there and then they now came. Now, Jesus said, if any man asks you, tell them the Lord has need of it. And truly, when they got there and they were trying to loosen the ass, some people asked, Hey, what are you doing? 
Then they responded just like Jesus said to them. They didn't say Jesus wants it. No, they could have driven them away. <laughs> God. Yeah, because the, most of the Jewish people, they don't believe in Jesus. But they will obey God when they understand what God wants. See? So they will tithe, but they don't believe in Jesus. So that's why Jesus told them specifically, tell them the Lord have need of it. So when you tell them the Lord have need of it, they will automatically think, okay, you're from the palace. Maybe you're Levites or something, okay? So they went there and people actually accosted them. Hey, what are you doing? The Lord has need of it. Oh, okay. Actually, it was kept there for the Lord. So that's why I said that was somebody's tithe. See? So God made provision. Now, that's the reason when I share about the tithe, and I always stress this. It is God's plan to meet the needs of his children. Now, I want you to picture this. Under normal circumstances, because I hear a lot of preachers who say, we don't tithe again, we just do free will giving. They, you see, when people talk like that, they don't understand the principles of God. They don't understand the way God operates. God could have left this thing in the realm of free will giving, but he didn't want to. He didn't want to put the future in the hands of a man. So God gave them a command that if they don't carry out, it will be outright disobedience, okay? So by that command, somebody had to keep his ass till it was matured. And when it was matured, on that day, on that, in that season, he brought it out of his gate and tied it somewhere so that whoever God have ordained will come and collect it. Uh, it was done so because it was someone's tithe. And guess what? Because the word of God have gone forth already concerning that thing long before Jesus, that man, that ass was born. Can you see the picture here now? So the commands that God gave is so that his word will be brought to pass. You remember what God said about Abraham? He says, I know Abraham. He will command his children and his household after him so that they will keep the way of the Lord to do justice and righteousness so that I will bring to pass the things that I have spoken concerning Abraham. Do you think of those statements? So God says, the reason I'm going to be open with Abraham is because see this Abraham, he will teach his children and his household. His household means everybody in his house, children, servants, everybody. So that they will keep the way of the Lord. So what does that mean? Abraham is going to teach these people what I command him. And, and because he will teach them what I command him, I will give him commands that will bring an everlasting um, culture. And this everlasting culture will be in place so that I will bring to pass my word 4,000 years later. Are you getting it now? So, but when you leave this thing in the realm of free will, a generation passes, the next generation don't understand what the former generation was doing. You see the fool in, in statements like that. Oh, we don't have to tithe. It's, it's just a free will. If you want to give to God, let, the Bible says, let everybody, everyone, if he have made up his mind, there was tithing still. And tithing is a covenant. I told you before, you don't cancel covenants. You only strengthen them. Every instruction that comes under, after a covenant has been made is to strengthen the covenant. You cannot cancel covenant. You can't. So Titan was a covenant. I explained that to you, I think, last week or so. Titan was a covenant. And God instituted that covenant with Abraham. The reason for that covenant, you know, you see, when you don't understand the processes of God, the reason for that covenant was so that God will fulfill the promise he made to Abraham. So the promise came first. Then the covenant came next. Then a culture came next. See, the promise. To strengthen that promise, a covenant was made. See, and to enforce that covenant, a culture was built. So when Melchizedek met Abraham, he brought wine 
and bread, which signify responsibility. I will take care of you. Why did he have to bring bread and wine? Because Abraham had things with him also. But then God had promised him that, look, because sometimes, you know, these things are so easy, but false doctrines, false teachings have made it look so difficult to explain. So easy. You made a covenant with a man. You told the man, leave your father's house to a land that I will show you. And the man followed you. Is it not just right that you bear the responsibility of that man? If I tell you today, leave where you're staying and go to another city. It is just right. If you're going to follow what I say, it is just right that in my mind, I make room for you. Because you are leaving what you are doing. You're leaving your comfort zone because of me it is just if your organization tells you okay please you need to leave your city we're sending you to another city won't they bear the responsibility of your movement they will they will and there is a law that if anything happens to you as long as you're in line of duty they are supposed to bear the responsibility So if God will now tell a man to leave his country to a different place that he doesn't even know, don't you think God is wise enough to know that I'll bear your responsibility forever? Now because God is eternal. God can promise you something forever because he's eternal. So every generation he remembers his promise and he fulfills it. So Abraham and all the children of Abraham, including those of us in Christ, we all come under that obedience of Abraham. And because we all come under that obedience of Abraham, we are part of the covenant that God made with him when he brought bread and wine. So now here is it. Abraham has been living his life and then he goes to war, was coming back from that battle with good things. See, and, and then God shows up and said, Abraham, lest you miss it. Because now you, you have all this wealth, okay? And you're thinking, wow, what am I going to do with this? So I'm going to build a new city. I mean, whatever he was thinking. And God showed up and said, no, 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 no. There is a plan between us. So you don't veer off the plan. I make a covenant with you today. Here is it, bread and wine. Do you know what this signifies? What is it, Lord? It means I will take care of you. You don't need to take care of yourself. I will take care of you. So not just you, all your generations after you, I'll bear their responsibility. Now that's actually God's intention from when he made Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. So it's nothing new, it's nothing strange. God is just taking us back to his original plan. And then so he made that covenant and that's the reason he told Abraham, take this thing that you have, go and give it back to the king of Sodom. Don't take even a shoelace from him. Do you think God didn't want Abraham to be rich? Do you think he didn't want Abraham to have those spoils of war? There was a covenant and that covenant makes I come in a prayer. You see, that's why some of you don't understand. You know, you, you, you've seen, you know, because people criticize a lot of things these days without understanding. You see somebody wakes up and then he's, he, he just said, I don't know, the Lord is saying I should uh, give out my car. The Lord is saying I should give out my house. The Lord is saying I should, I should give out my clothes. The Lord is saying I should give out all my money. I'm not saying a pastor is telling you give your, give, no. I mean, people who receive convictions in their own heart, just like it was happening in the early church. They were selling everything they had. Not because they believe the rapture is going to happen the next minute. No. Because they, they understood the, 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 the teachings of Jesus. That there is a covenant. There is a covenant. And that covenant makes God responsible for taking care of you. That covenant came into light when the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost. From that day, 
he took over their responsibility. Are you getting what I'm saying? They came, that covenant God made with Abraham came into force because now Christ has come. And if Christ has come, they themselves having the understanding that that means God is now our responsibility. If God is now our responsibility, what am I still doing with all this land? Yeah, because now it's got to be the land that God has given to me. It's got to be the things that God has given to me. So just like God said to Abraham, what you have with you, I want you to give it away. Don't, don't use it anymore. Give it away. And Abraham went to the king and says, look, I have sworn before the Lord, I will take not even a shoelace from you, lest you say you have made Abraham rich. It's the same thing in Christ. Lest the world say they have made us rich. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. There is a glory that God has planned for us. Some of you don't have no, no understanding of what I'm saying. So when we say, may the Lord give you understanding, it's a very deep statement. Some of you are still trusting in, 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 your, in, your, in your salary. You're still trusting in the things that you have. You don't, you've not come under that covenant yet. You haven't. You know about it, but you don't trust it yet. When you go before the Lord and, and, and you begin to talk to him in line with this covenant, you'll be amazed at the kind of instructions the Lord will begin to give to you. I said the Lord will begin to give to you. Don't ever think the, the apostles came together and said, okay, all of you, go and sell your land. No. There was something happening in their hearts. The Lord was doing something new in the land. So the testimony was like someone just went and said, the Lord said I should sell my land and, and, and give out the money. Really? Yeah. And then their next gathering, someone else said, ah, brother James, you know, I received the same instruction. Are you serious? Yeah, in fact, I've already put the land on sale. If someone has made an offer, I believe by tomorrow we'll seal the deal. And then Barnabas came to I said, look, man, I've sold all my land. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. So this fellow Ananias and Sapphira have seen all this. I'm saying, ah, ah, let's not be like we're the devil's here. Let's let to we too. They didn't hear the Lord. They didn't hear the Lord for themselves. They just wanted to do what other people are doing. And so by the time they sold their land, they realized there was no grace in their hearts to carry it. You see, that's why I tell people, you see this thing is the work of the Spirit of God. It's not a copy-copy kind of thing. So because you see someone drop his car key, I say, God say I should sell my car. You now say, ah, ah, not only you, even me, I'll sell my car. That person will receive a, re a, a reward two days later. You, three years later, you're not asking yourself, hey, mm, <laughs> because you didn't hear any voice. If God doesn't command you to do something, he will not accept your offering. Don't think, don't think God is crazy about your offerings. If he doesn't command you, he will not receive it. Don't think it will move him. So that's what was happening in the early church. Why? Because there was a covenant that God cut with Abraham. And that covenant includes us that are in Christ. So when you come into Christ, there is the before and the after. The before is everything you have amassed, everything you have gotten. When you come into Christ, those things have no meaning. I'm teaching you the truth. Every one of those things have no meaning. So as you continue walking in Christ, you will find out that he will cause you to do away with them. And then you begin to walk in this new life where God himself begins to provide everything that you need. So you get to that point where you can point on at everything that, that you have and say, this one, God gave me. This one, God gave me. This one, God gave me. Yeah. And that's how you now see God's glory everywhere in your life. This is the truth, brothers and sisters. 
But like I said earlier, it is the work of the Holy Spirit, it's not the work of a man. So I can't read all these things. I have so much knowledge on these things. When it comes to God's finances, God's provision, listen, I can, I can say I'm a teacher in these things. With experience and proof. So, so when I tell you this thing, I'm telling you, I come in this area. God takes full responsibility for your life. Then you begin to understand everything Jesus taught in this area. Take no thought for your life. Why? Because there's a covenant. And as I always tell you, when you tithe, you must wait for the voice of God. He's the one that will direct you because that's the only way you know that he has accepted it. If, if you are not sure he's accepted it, if you are not in an environment where you are convinced that Titan is spiritual and, and, and you know to relate with the Spirit of God where this is concerned, you will cry at the end. You will be among those who are saying, hey, this Titan thing does not work, this Titan thing does not Some of us live by Titan, literally, we live by Titan. I pray the Lord gives you understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now tomorrow is the 31st of the month of May. And you know we normally have our prayer and fasting meeting throughout the first. We begin at 12 midnight. Uh, tomorrow 12 midnight. That's Friday 12 midnight. All through the first. See. And then we pray according to the watches. And this meeting holds via Zoom. I want to invite you to join this month's edition. Plan for it. We'll send you the information by tomorrow. God bless you.